Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 are nearly upon us, but there are lots of really important settings in the game that can make a drastic difference and give you some real competitive advantages. In this video, which will be split into chapters if you want to check out specific sections, we're going to go over all of those customization options, and this applies to whether you're a PC player or a console player, these are going to make a huge difference for you. I'm going to start off with the biggest settings that make a big difference to everybody, and then we'll go into micro settings for things like controller players, keyboard and mouse players, and stuff that's a little bit more specific later on. Now one of those settings that makes a big difference that's hidden away in a bunch of menus is the color customization tab, which you can find under interface and accessibility. This is a really cool setting that's going to make the game far more readable for you. First, you have to drop down here and select a filter. Now, the incredible thing about this is that it's going to make the world more vibrant and more colorful and can even make the HUD and interface more vibrant and colorful. This is something that's definitely going to make a huge difference to your game, and it's a little bit similar to things like NVIDIA filters that players use on PC. Now, for the world color intensity, you want this up to about 65%, and this will give the world just a little bit more saturation and color, make it pop a little bit more, and make it easier to see opponents. Now, for the interface, this will probably get fixed. At the moment, 100 actually washes it out, but you can put it to zero to get the maximum color intensity. And you can see that the preview image changes depending on the value. Now, this will likely get patched and fixed, so at some point, be ready to change this, but you want it to be the brightest possible color. And in here, you can decide to set up your own default color palette for all of your players, your enemies, your teammates, your neutrals, and everything in between. And this is the color palette that I recommend. And you can put whatever color you so please, especially if you're somebody who struggles with color blindness, this is definitely great for you. But just in terms of competitive advantages, uh, I've opted to go for enemy being bright pink. And the reason for this is that pink is a color which is not used in Call of Duty at all and will naturally be the most obvious color on the screen for when you're engaging an opponent. For me, I've simply put it as white, for teammates I've made it green, and for party mates I've put it to blue. Lots of the maps in Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2, of course, our Mazra, will be desert based, so I feel like having blue is a really good option. And then for contested, I've simply gone for orange. You can mess around with these completely as you please, especially if something visually occurs more for you, or if something's more preferable, but these are the settings that I recommend. In the HUD settings, there are more useful things and settings and tools that you can use. Uh, one of the ones I've changed here is an abbreviation of player names when they are friendlies. And this is really important because it means you're less likely to have a scenario where you're looking at an enemy, but a friendly is somewhere behind them on the map, and the name tag appears like the enemy is a friendly, you don't want that to happen, so you absolutely want that set to abbreviate it. Uh, if you're somebody who cares about telemetry, you can absolutely enable these as well uh, and have your own custom setup for telemetry. Me personally, I like my FPS counter to be on, I like packet loss to be on, and I like server latency to be on. The rest of the settings are entirely user preference, but for me, that's what I go for. There's one setting in here on the account and network setting that you're definitely going to want to change and that is your block list. Now, my block list is completely filled with players who I've encountered before who look like they were cheating, and it's going to be the same for you. The problem here is that this block list only has a 200 man limit, so it's worth resetting and deleting all of these before you head into Warzone 2 and Modern Warfare 2, so if you do encounter Cheetah, you have space on your block list. That's definitely something you're gonna wanna look into. In the audio settings, this is the audio mix that I'm presently using. I personally prefer the headphones range and EQ setting. Uh, however, there is also the option to use home theater or cinema, which could potentially, depending on your headset, be a little bit more preferable. I wouldn't recommend bass boosting because bass boosting increases the amount of lower frequency sounds in the game, which you don't want. The only low frequency sound you want in the game are people's bassy footsteps, so I don't recommend increasing this. Uh, in terms of the setup, it is a bit user preference. I have music to zero, dialogue to 20. Hit markers, I definitely reduce to around 40 or 50. The last thing you want when you're shooting at an opponent is to not hear other footsteps because all you can hear is doo, 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 doo. really annoying. Definitely don't want that. Um, and in terms of other settings down here, there are a couple of other things that you can do. For example, I turn off connecting to voice chat because I don't care about people in game. 
Uh, and another really cool setting is the ability to have old school Modern Warfare 2 hit marker sound effects and also reduce the um, flashbang and stun grenade sound. If you've ever had an audio effect where uh, you get hit by a flashbang or you get hit by a stun and you hear the sort of ear piercing eee, this actually reduces that audio. So definitely. Now under the graphical settings, I'm going to the view section here, which is available on console and PC, and these are what you want. You want this set to the minimum possible value of camera movement, which means you don't want things like camera shake and stuff like that for grenades and flashbangs. But the important settings is your FOV settings and your ADS field of view settings. Me personally, I play on a 27 inch monitor, so I go to 120 FOV, which I personally prefer. This is, uh, I believe, um, a horizontal field of view. Uh, so the vertical field of view equivalent to this would be 89 for people who know those statistics. But generally speaking, your FOV should roughly scale to how far away you're sitting from the screen. I play 120 FOV because I'm at a desk and a monitor. Some of you who are playing on TVs, on sofas, may prefer something closer to 100 or 90. But the important setting here is to have the affected FOV setting. Now, if you have a higher FOV with the affected setting on, this will actually reduce the overall visual recoil in the game because your perspective is more zoomed out. And because it's more zoomed out, although the recoil itself hasn't changed, the overall visual effect of it will. You also want your first person and third person camera movement as low as possible, like I mentioned before. Now, in terms of the quality settings and in terms of the display settings, these are things that uh, I would highly recommend referring to free fee if you want to find these out. Uh, but generally speaking, in the quality tab, if you have the ability to turn on Fidelity uh, FX CAS, I would definitely recommend having that on and putting the strength somewhere up to 60. This should be available on both console and PC and will make the game generally appear more sharper. Uh, otherwise, there are a couple of other things that you probably will want to disable. Um, and most of it tends to refer to things like uh, the overall depth of field, the world motion blur and weapon motion blur, and film grain. You don't want the game to be blurry, turn all of that off. Uh, and you also don't really necessarily want film grain. Some people prefer it. Me personally, I prefer a lower setting. That is definitely personal preference. But for these three, you 100% want them off at all possible times. And of course, if you're a NVIDIA Reflex user, on plus boost. Now, for controller settings, I have an entire setup video for this if it's something that you want to use. Um, so feel free to click that link where I go over everything in entire amounts of detail. But there are a couple of things that you will want to change here. For example, you'll want to turn off automatic tax sprint, especially in a game which favors corner to corner gameplay. And you also want prioritize interact selected uh, whenever there is an object and a reload scenario happening at the same time. What this means is that if you're at a loot crate in Warzone 2, pressing square or X once will open the loot crate, whereas holding it will force the reload. And if you prefer the inverse of that, you would want prioritize reload. For me personally, I recommend Prioritize Interact. These are the other settings I have presently for controller. Uh, like I say, did a full video on all of this. You definitely want things to be uh, as precise to these settings as possible. And you also want uh, trigger dead zones to be as high as possible. Stick dead zones to be as low as possible so long as you don't have drift. Um, but there's a couple of things that you will want turned on here as well. So, for example, sprint and tactical sprint behavior, you want to be set to a toggle. Again, you don't want to be tack sprinting in a game which so heavily relies on slower movements. You also want ground in mantle to be on, and you also want automatic airborne mantle to be set to partial. All of these other settings are a little bit self-subjective, but me personally, this is exactly the setup I'm using right now, and I think these give you the best competitive advantage. If you're somebody who prefers to tap to slide as opposed to hold to slide, uh, you can change this as well. On the inverted system, you hold to slide and tap to dolphin dive instead. But these are the settings that I presently. You also want a couple of other things here. For example, exit weapon mounting. You want that to be as short as possible. Uh, you also want quick C4 detonation turned off. You want a short delay to the vehicle recentering or a long delay, depending on your preference. I personally go for long delay. Uh, and you also, for example, want the ping wheel delay and double-tatch danger delay to be short, in my opinion, 
However, some of you may prefer having these flat out turned off in some scenarios as well. If you're playing on keyboard and mouse, all of these settings are mostly subjective in terms of your sensitivities and multipliers, but you also, most importantly, want ADS sensitivity type to be relative, and you want the coefficient to be set to 1.33, and this will help you build muscle memory. However, under the mouse calibration tab, you want to make sure all of this is turned off. Filtering, smoothing, uh, and the acceleration, you don't want any of those settings to be enabled whatsoever. And again, the gameplay settings are pretty much identical to what I mentioned on the controller settings. However, some of these have a bit more options due to the fact that there are more key bindings available. If you found this video useful, feel free to subscribe. We'll be covering everything for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. And make sure you hit the like button as well. As always, folks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.